I'm Elise Bowman. I'm the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT. And I am Momiji's mother on Fruits Basket, and I am with Justin Cook. Hey, I'm the voice of Yusuke Urameshi from Yu Yu Hakusho, but I'm also the voice of Kirishima from My Hero Academia. Yes, and this is Anime Adventures, the show where I bring you conversations with anime voice actors. And of course, you're direct, you've done everything in anime. <laughs> So, my chat with Justin is coming up. Welcome to Anime Adventures. So we are here at the My Hero Con, and it has been wonderful and so much fun. My Hero, all weekend, all the time. It's crazy the the amount of popularity the show has gotten. It really has found an audience to connect with. Yeah. It really has, and the audience has connected. Yeah. Yeah. It's a brilliant group of fans. It's so funny. You start working on these shows, and as you work on different shows, you kind of start to meet the subgroups of the anime fan community. And the fan community specific for My Hero is mm -hmm. such a unique and positive group of people. They're oh, just really? absolutely fantastic. Have you had some great conversations this weekend about the show? Yeah, absolutely. The thing that's fun about this show is that people don't just want to like kind of have you recall your favorite line or like, you know, what's a funny moment from whatever, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. They're way more interested in really talking about and dissecting the storylines and the developments of these characters. Oh. They feel very human and they really grow up over time. Matter of fact, we're in season four right now and it's kind of interesting to even see characters like, like my character, Kirishima, has like physically grown up throughout the course of the four seasons of the show like physically yeah. he's gotten a little bit older so that's really kind of neat to get to see and to as an actor kind of figure out how to play and grow up with the character oh, but like yeah. Harry Potter this show really does seem to kind of grow up with its audience like each new season kind of gets a little bit maybe darker or a little deeper just a little bit more mature mm -hmm. each season which is kind of awesome that's awesome and that's really interesting because you're right a, a lot of shows they just ask for your favorite line, which is cool even for my hero. Absolutely. But it's really neat that they want to talk and dissect and yeah. analyze things. You know, Kirishima's backstory was just told in this season, and I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people who have, like, you know, uh, identified with that particular backstory or had something that was somehow comparable in their life. Uh, and, and again, getting to see these hero kids kind of deal with these problems, they don't do so perfectly. Like, they don't nail it out just like a hero. They nail it out a bit more like a teenager, mm -hmm. which is a little hit or miss. And it's cool to get them to get to see as an audience, it's cool to kind of get to see you make a mistake and then live with that mistake and the consequences mm. for it and then grow from that. It's truly kind of, it's like Fruits Basket in the way that it offers a lot of life lessons. Yeah, well, and kind of like real life, we make mistakes and deal with the consequences yeah. and it's not always perfect and wrapped up in a bow. Yeah. Sometimes stories can be a little bit more human that way. Yes, really interesting. Now, if you had a quirk. Yes. What quirk? Right, the quirk thing. I think I yeah. do have a quirk. I discovered it this weekend. Oh, and that oh, you is have that. One. Yes, and it's that I can't seem to put the right color lid on the right pen. <laughs> I don't know why, and I don't know the benefit of this quirk just yet, but mm -hmm. that's it. I have a superpower for that. Okay, yeah. well, we'll figure out the benefit. Yeah, good yes. luck. Okay. I don't have anything. Yeah, we'll work on that one. Well, you brought up Fruits Basket. I did. Let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah, and the excitement that it's kind of, it's back in it's such back. a way at this point is really kind of blowing my mind but yeah it goes I mean Fruits Basket for me goes back almost 20 years now from the first time that we worked on this show yeah because I was in the original and then reprised one of my roles nice. so you too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I've been coming back as oh, here he is oh, Haru yes, so he is. <laughs> Moo <laughs> so yes I get to come back and be cattle all over again mm -hmm. it's wonderful I like uh, actually, which is funny, I don't eat beef at all, oh. so I guess it's only right that I voice the cow. Of course cow. you voice the cow yeah. and you don't eat beef. No. Yes. Well, that would be right, that right? That would be, yes. It reminds me there's a Far Side car cartoon of where there's one cow and he's grilling out on the grill and his neighbor is another cow and he's like, you're sick, Carl, you're <laughs> sick. I don't think Carl was his name, it just kind of came to my head. I don't know why, but there it is. <laughs> That's great. Okay, let's talk. Uh, Yu Yu. Yes, Yu Yu yes. Hakusho. Here yes, he is. Yes, here he is. Yuse K. And then I have to just bring this in to it's the my wife's too. lunchbox, and she made she... me pack all my drinks to bring to mm -hmm. the con today. Yes, and you were a good little boy. I, I did. Your I brought my, and I'm going to take it home too. Yes. 
<laughs> That's always the problem. <laughs> they they, they you never remember to take it home. Yeah, they never make it home. They always stay in the, the school locker. And doesn't she use this? Oh, she does. That's what she'll need it tomorrow. She'll need it tomorrow for lunch. Yeah. If I don't bring it home, my wife won't eat. Aw, so, trouble. Yeah, yes, New York show's be been great, and there's an OVA now coming back out. At, in October at Comic Con just last year, uh, Chris and I got to be part of the announcement mm. to talk about this OVA that's oh, coming out. It was in New York, wasn't it? The yeah, announcement? That's in right. Yes. That's so, so that awesome. was fantastic, and I love that, like, again, like 15 years later, here's something kind of rearing its head. I have another story to tell. So. That's so great. I know I had a small role in that as well. It's so neat that when these things come back around. Yeah, it's. it's it, I guess really anime is a lot like Lost, is that you never really die in Lost. <laughs> All my references are from at least 10 years ago. Okay, we'll, we'll take it, yeah, yes. So live with that. Yeah, speaking of, you and I have known each other for a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Yes, I start, Dragon Ball days. Yeah, next week will be my 20th year anniversary at Funimation. Really? Yeah. And you really were there from the beginning because, let's see, when it comes to directors, it was Barry Watson first. That's then right. Chris Abbott. That's right. And then how, You know your history. I do. I well, I started you. up in 2000, so Funimation okay. had been in North Texas about a year. Oh, okay. uh, by that time. And uh, so I started as an ADR engineer, and as I understand it, I replaced uh, John Bergmeier, who was oh. the ADR engineer before me. Okay. He's the voice of uh, Shigure in mm. Fruits Basket, and Kurama in My Hero, or, or so in, uh, yes, yeah. in the Yu Yu Hakusho. But, and so many others, as you were saying. Yes. But uh, but John stepped out and started doing the writer supervisor job, and hey, I okay. came in and started being the new ADR engineer. So I worked alongside Chris Sabat and recorded the actors. And my first day on the job was recording Sean in the morning. Uh -huh. uh, and this was the scene where he had come back from Planet Namek and uh, that he was discussing with Future Trunks the stay he had on Planet Yard Rat and he learned instant transmission. And in the afternoon was Eric Vale's first recording session as Future really? Trunks. Yeah. I can't remember, I mean, I can't believe you remember the details that well. Yeah, like, it's a thing. I don't, I can't remember a line of dialogue to save uh, my life, so I'm really happy it's always written down on the script <laughs> page in front of us, but I seem to never forget these little details. So there's one of your quirks. That's like, a quirk. That's, yeah, there it you is. Remember those types of details. I do. I, yes, it will service no one, in, a historian perhaps. <laughs> well, and it help it helps the show. Fair enough. People there it is. People will get to know little trivia about you, about Funimation, about Dragon Ball. I'm full of it. I'm full of it. I'm full of it. <laughs> I'm full of trivia. Trivia. <laughs> And I love it. <laughs> now, uh, when did you transition into the director role? Well, let's see. I was a voice director alongside Sabbath through most of Dragon Ball Z. Okay. And at some point uh, in, after the Cell Games arc, and when it started getting more into uh, the, the future timeline with, uh, uh, well, with the uh, Little Trunks and Little Goten, mm -hmm. uh, I started working on Dragon Ball. Uh, the the original series and so we went back and recorded about 80 episodes of Dragon Ball and then that went to Mike McFarland and then I started working on Yu Yu Hakusho as the voice director for that show yes. and that started probably in the spring of 2001. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Because that all happened before I got there, so I didn't even know some of those. Details. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had finished. Um, let's see. I got a shirt on here. Is a, but you see the twin towers mm -hmm. here. That uh, we were working on episode six of Yu Yu Hakusho show on 9/11 of 2001. Oh. Uh, and then, uh, so that from a timing aspect, and then in February of 2002 is when Yu Yu Hakusho show started airing on Cartoon Network. Okay. And so I think wow. GT would have probably started up, uh, does late, 02, early late, 03? I think late 03. Late 03? Yeah. And Bevan started as the voice director, Barry right? Watson was my first director, okay. but just for an episode or two. Gotcha. See, this is, I don't remember this detail. Like, a few episodes, and then Chris Bevan stepped, stepped in, in immediately. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, and directed the rest. Yeah. So, yeah, well, while we're talking Dragon Ball... Oh, yes! Raditz. See, now, the show originally was being dubbed mm -hmm. up in Canada, so when Raditz first appeared, it was a Canadian actor, but then we went back and recorded all the uncut episodes uh, about the same time that you were working on GT to start. And so that's when I got cast as Raditz to do his voice, which sounds something like this. He's very angry. He's got a lot of problems, this Raditz guy. <laughs> very angry. Angry with everyone. That's so great. Yes, but Boo, ironically, is the end villain of the franchise, but I was him before I was Raditz. 
Go figure. Time travel. And Boo was just the example of where Josh Martin had done such a fantastic job playing uh, uh, playing Boo, the fat Boo. Uh, it was this high-pitched voice, and it was so great, uh, but we needed a ton of diversity, and fat Boo and evil Boo had several scenes together. Uh, so I kind of came up with this dark monster voice that, here's a little secret, won't be one after this, that I ultimately kind of developed from having heard Freddy Krueger's voice a lot growing oh, up as a kid. Really? So there was a line he had in the second movie, you have the body, I have the brains. And so that voice ended up kind of being Super Boo's voice. I just made it a little gruffer, a little angrier. But he was still kind of that monster-esque type voice. But that's where it came from. Oh, really? Yeah. Well. There's your secret. There you go. It's there out you now. Go. It's out now. Well, gosh, and then directing. Now you still act, and gosh, you're like in charge of the empire. <laughs> <practically. laughs> well, there was a little while there that we started to increase the number of shows that we were working mm -hmm. on, and uh, my uh, Barry Watson, mm -hmm. the producer at the time, uh, came up to me and he kind of made me an offer. He said, "Hey, uh, you could keep voice directing and doing what you're doing. You love doing it, mm -hmm. and that's great. Uh, and I'll hire." another producer and they'll come in and they'll make the rules for how the department works and then you can operate under their rules or you could be the producer and you can make the rules and so that was the last day of voice directing <laughs> like, so, hmm. <laughs> yeah so uh, we started hiring other voice directors and Mike McFarlane was now voice directing for us mm -hmm. pretty much all the time uh, and of course Bevins was voice directing I even think Zach Bolton started directing episodes around this time and Funimation was very interested in wanting to make sure that we were kind of anchoring down what our level of quality should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were also kind of getting away from uh, that kind of 90s and early 2000s style of dubbing episodes and moving a little bit more towards uh, to an audience that was more welcoming of anime. And so it kind of allowed us to start making anime a little closer to what its original intentions mm -hmm. were. Uh, and so what that did really it, unintentionally, I think, was it brought back a real soup, kind of a human level to a lot of the characters. And they stopped being as, as, as cartoony as they might have been uh, and started moving more into this realm where Trinity Blood, uh, Desert Punk was another show coming around this time, Kitty Grade, which was a science fiction title, um, Speed Graffer, uh, Bacchano, Tyler Walker was starting to step up yes. and direct episodes. So it started to get more stories that really felt like they were anchored in more of a real world mm -hmm. as opposed to a, a fanciful world. And that really helped both the directors and our writers all really kind of mature, again, kind of with the content. So it's been kind of fun. That's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you've seen it all. So my last question is just from your perspective, the difference in in Funimation's work from the beginning to now? Because everything's changed so much and sure. we crank stuff out so quickly these days. Well, you know, one of the things I think that Funimation's always been pretty cognizant of is um, what their fans want. And their fan base oh. has changed so much over the years. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've always enjoyed about Funimation, Funimation is that they really do keep a pretty tight feel on who it is they're ultimately selling their product to. Oh, uh, so at one time, it was a thought to be a kid's market. And we, of course, now, you know, 20 years later, uh, it, it's not that we realize, it's that the, the, the market has shifted, it's changed, you know, and there's very much, uh, it, it, it's not even fair to say that anime is a niche market anymore. I mean, it's, we're oh. at pop culture events yes. now. You know, yes. this is the pop culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, things like Goku and, and, and Vegeta, these are common, just everyday words now, not, not something where, like for instance, my father would always refer to Star Wars character names as my creatures. <laughs> oh, Justin, what, what creatures are these? You know, but he was, he was my dad, right? Yeah. So, uh, but now these names, you know, Lando Calrissian, pop culture, everybody knows who that is. So Raditz and Super Boo have kind of become that. Certainly Kakarot. There's a video game called Kakarot out yes, now. Out now. You know, so, yeah. it, you know, here's a, again, a, a, a name that, that uh, might otherwise 20 years ago would have made people go, how do you pronounce that? What's that? It's so foreign. It's so weird. What is that? Uh, and we're just so far away from that now. The world has truly gotten smaller. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, uh, being part of a company that is aware of that and then works to those those strengths as opposed to looking at them as weaknesses or something that might be less desirable, they leaned into it. And it's just, honestly, it fills me with a lot of pride to be working with a company that's so aware 
of themselves and where they stand in the fan community. That's so great to know, that right? awareness. Yeah. Yes, and they're lucky to have you because your passion and your <laughs> excitement. You're just kidding me. They're lucky through. to have all of us. <laughs> well, they, they have a good group. Yes. Well, thank you Anytime, so much. Please. And hey, thank you for being here. I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. And let's say bye in a character voice. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Hey, guys, Kirishima here. Really, Justin Cook voice up Kirishima, but I'm going to let you know. Stay solid as a rock, guys. Anime Adventures. Till next time. Awesome. Thank Boom. you. That's so great. I appreciate no it. No problem. Anytime. That was rocking. I love it.